everybody, Judge Coach here, and this is the model we're going to be basing today. Uh, now if you saw my previous video talking about base materials, you'll know what we're going to use, but if you haven't, here it is. It's a tube of uh, denture tablets for cleaning dentures. Um, I have no interest in the contents of this box, but the tube is just the right size for a Games Workshop model. So uh, let's uh, get started. Okay, so I'm just going to take my razor saw here and uh, cut through this. And it's fairly easy, it's a, it's a nice uh, plastic, it's not hard to cut through at all. Um, I have, <laughs> however, have cut it at a slight angle, so. Uh, it's, I'm just going round in a corkscrew here, so I'm just going to stop there and cut it with some clippers. There we go. And uh, now we can just clip the top down a bit, get rid of the uh, sharp edge there and uh, get it to a, a position where we can start thinking about uh, how we want it to look. So let's see what we want to achieve here with this. So let's have a look at him on top and see what we think. Um, you could just sit him straight on top, but I think that'd be a bit dull. So I want to cut away a bit of the front um, and have a bit of rubble and debris and stuff uh, for him to stand on. So before we do anything else, let's let's do that. So we'll just use some clippers to get that started, and then. Uh, Finish that off with a. I'm just gonna shape this, trying to cut away from myself whenever possible uh, for safety purposes. But uh, it's just a case of cutting away pieces, trying to break up the shape so it doesn't look uh, so sharp edged and, and uh, just uh, making it look more natural. And then uh, I'll just file away any little bits and pieces. Um, I cut a bit there too uh, too much. I wasn't happy with the shape there, so just use the clippers, to straighten it out a bit, and then file it down. And now I'm just going to sand off uh, any loose bits, any sharp bits, so I don't injure myself when I'm working with it. Okay, here I have a little box of cork off cuts, and I'm just going to start breaking it off and filling this up with cork. Now the red you can see at the bottom there is just some plasticine I've uh, filled the bottom with just to give it a little bit of weight and to just to occupy that space. There's no need for, for that to be anything in particular. It could be any material you want, all I'm doing is filling the hole basically. So I'll just add some super glue and then break some bits of cork and fill this void up with that cork. Let's have a look at how he looks. He looks a bit boring just straight on top, so I want to get a bit of an angle. I want to get a feeling that he's running towards you, just about a jump. So having that cutaway at the front will give us a, a bit of a drop and will help sell the, the angle and give us a bit of angle to work with. So I need to cut away a piece so that I can get something in there to to give him an angle, something for him to be running on. Now I could have not filled that with cork in the first place when I built it, but I tend to build it up and then look at it and then think how I want it. So 
let's have a look now in my bits box, my basing bits box, and uh, see what uh, I can find to uh, add a little interest and, and give our models something to stand on. Okay, we could use a little bit of pipe, but I don't think that looks right. Um, I think this piece here, which is a little wall end or something like that from one of the GW building sets, I think that will give us just the right uh, amount of uh, interest on the base. It will give our, give our model something to stand on, give it the angle that we're looking for, and uh, should uh, help sell the the feeling of it being in a war-torn city. Uh, I kind of want the feeling that there's a tumble-down building and this guy's come jumping out of the, the rubble to try and chop your head off or something. So we'll put some little bricks and other bits and pieces on there and I think that'll, that'll work. The first thing we're going to do to this little uh, pillar is to glue some cork to the bottom of it because if we put it in, on the base as it is now which is a perfectly smooth flat bottom it's going to look fake and, and out of place so by gluing a little bit of cork to the bottom there we're just going to make it look like there's uh, some dirt and a bit of concrete that was used when it was set into the ground and now that it's been shoved over this has been pulled up uh, underneath. It just helps to make it look a bit more natural. Uh, so I think that's looking pretty good so we'll just glue that in place now. So we'll just hit some glue in that groove we cut earlier, Play, place it in there. Once we're happy with the position we'll just uh, give it a quick square to the accelerator, make the glue set straight away and uh, we're good to go. So we'll just carve away a bit more uh, open up this front a little bit more and uh, get the, the shape we desire. I'm open it up a little bit more so we can get a couple of those bricks in I think. That's going to help it. So what we're going to do is use some of the Vallejo plastic putty which is uh, an acrylic resin uh, with marble dust so it sets really hard. Um, but it's really easy to work with. It's the consistency of a, uh, of a toothpaste. So you can just squirt that on and then just uh, move it around with the tool, texture it. Very versatile substance. Um, like I say, because it comes in the, the little uh, Vallejo bottles, you can also just sort of stick the nozzle in there and squ squirt it in. So we're just going to set the bricks into this. We don't need to use any glue or anything. Uh, when this stuff dries, it will uh, be more than capable of holding these bricks in place. So it's just a case of uh, laying the bricks down and then moving them around until they're in a position that looks about right. If you get a bit on the surface, you can always just uh, wipe it off with your finger. A little bit of water, it's more soluble. Um, we'll be good to go. So that's looking pretty good now. So we'll move on to the next stage. And for the next stage, we're going to use some Vallejo grey pumice. Um, and uh, this is uh, an acrylic resin with ground up pumice in it. And so it just gives us some nice little granules um, that we can work into the little nooks and crannies here which will um, help us go from uh, the, the cork to the slightly smoother area in the in the putty and we'll just add another layer of detail. The more layers of, of material you can get onto a base, you know, the, the, the more sizes, um, the more realistic it's going to look. Um, so different grain sizes of sand, things like that will always help to make a, a, a base look more uh, realistic. Uh, now the uh, grey pumice has quite a fine grain and uh, is very easily controlled. Yeah, it can easily be applied with a toothpick or it could easily be applied with a, an old paintbrush. 
and again it's water soluble so uh, you can then use the, the paintbrush to sort of feather it in a bit uh, so it doesn't just look like a, a, a clump um, a, a sandy bit, you know, grainy bits just dumped onto the base Now to get that next layer of detail I'm going to use some of the GW Typhus Corrosion. Uh, now I know they've made this as a, uh, a wash you can put on your painted models uh, but I quite like to use it uh, in, uh, in my basing and uh, just use it in the construction phase because this is a, a, that's a, a very fine grain um, and so I just use this to add another layer of detail uh, to the base so it's just a case of uh, using that around the grey pumice um, to, to feather that out a bit Okay, and that's pretty much the construction of the base done. So we'll just see where he fits on best. So he's going to look like he's running down the wall end there towards us. So that's that's the kind of feeling I was going for. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So the angle looks about right. So let's stick a hole in there for the pin to go in and we'll see how it looks. And there we go. Yeah, I think that's looking looking pretty good. It uh, looks quite dynamic. The, uh, the sweep on the clothes match the, the angle of the, the base. Try it the other way around. Looks pretty good running uphill as well. Uh, we didn't add enough detail to the back of the base, I don't think, for it to, to pull off that. It would just look like it was the base was the wrong way around, I think. So we'll have him coming down the hill again. Um, maybe not straight on, maybe at a slight angle. Like he's running down it and he's, he's jumping off that now. Yeah, I think that looks that's quite good. So, yep, it's nice and sturdy in there now. It's looking pretty good. So we'll get that primed and see what it looks like. Here's the base all primed up. Uh, I've gone for black GW... Uh, rattle can primer and then uh, just a little bit of white over the top and yeah it's looking pretty good the details um, looking nice yeah, there's uh, no obvious transitions it's all looking pretty natural uh, so let's move on to painting it so I'm using a mix of Panzer Ace's Shadow Flesh and GW's uh, Stegodon scale green and that should give me a uh, slightly ready brown to uh, use for the mud on the base and uh, it should uh, make it tonally match the model as the blue for the hood was um, uh, based off the Stegodon scale green and I'm also going to use the Stegodon scale green for the um, wall end piece as well um, so I'm going to do that in Stegodon scale green and then darken that up afterwards to make it look like a slightly greeny black so here we are we'll just add that on and we no need to wait for the mud to dry we'll just uh, add this on at the same time 
and uh, if we get some wet blending around the edges where the mud is then uh, all the better. So we're just starting to base coat the bricks now and that is just pure um, Panzerace's shadow flesh and that's going to be the, the base for the, the red bricks. Okay, we're just going to add some shadows to the wall end here now using uh, Vallejo German Grey, which is a very dark grey, almost black, and uh, that'll be thinned down, um, so two to one, and we just uh, apply that to uh, the wall end just to. darken it a bit because we're wanting to make it look like it's uh, a greeny black colour. I'm going to add some highlights to the wall end piece here and this is a mix of the sticking on scale green and GW's Ultron Grey um, and this should uh, just give us a nice highlight which will blend to the edge there and uh, you also use to, to pick out the edges I'm using a mix of Vallejo's Rose Brown and Vallejo Panzerace's Shadow Flesh to uh, add a highlight to the red bricks. It should be a nice orangey skin tone, uh, really. And uh, it's just a case of blending that to the edge. Okay, we now added a little um, Ultron Grey to the mix just to lighten it and we'll just concentrate a bit more on the edge of these bricks uh, to add a bit more definition to them and just make them stand down that little bit more. Now using a mix of GW's Rakarth Flesh and uh, Ultron Grey. Just going to do a little dry brush on the mud areas just to add a little definition to those as well. I take a bit of GW's Agrox Earthshade and uh, just use that to uh, pick out some of the details in the soil and around the bricks and the wall piece. Um, just to add a little definition uh, and just make them stand out a little bit more. And now I'm just using a wash made out of Vallejo's uh, iron oxide pigments and water. It's quite thin and I'm just using this uh, around the bricks and uh, any other sort of dirt areas that were made uh, on the wall end piece. So this is simulating all the, the brick dust from all the broken bricks and what have you. Okay, and now just taking some pure Vallejo black and a large brush, I'm just going to uh, blacken the edges uh, and add that finishing touch to the base. Uh, 
And there we go. Here's the final results. And uh, I'm quite happy with that. I think he looks uh, looks pretty good. It's nice and dynamic. Uh, it's got quite a bit of movement to it, I think. And uh, is the result we were looking for. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you found it of some use. And it just goes to show that uh, you can find materials for display basing anyway. So thanks for watching everybody and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks a lot.